This is rather a special occasion that we came together today. There's been a lot of uh, a lot of uh, perceptual discussion about the things that are happening in the uh, eminence, the immediacy of the occasion of our coming together on these videos. One of the emphatic declarations of the Savior Jesus Christ who represents, in my mind, the entirety of my solution to the problem that I could have been separate from eternal life, and showed me in a process of mind and awakening to the reality of what I am that entirely dispels, in my mind, the idea of death. And, uh, the inquiry that's inevitably made by the perceptual mind, by the human condition, which is an entirety of a dependency on the logistics of a space-time episode, how a mind of the nature of perceptual observation of itself could come to know with certainty that there is no death. It is impossible that the idea of death that is pervasive within the nature of what we term temporal reality, okay, will not declare itself in each incident of activity in which you participate in your conceptual mind. In that sense, what our Savior Jesus means when he says, I'm going to raise the dead is that he's going to raise you as you identify yourself now. Can you see this with me? The nature or the idea of being non-existent must employ an ability to identify yourself in the possibility of that being true in a past or future condition. Now, the idea that I'm going to heal the sick using Jesus' mind or raise the dead is the simple declaration, I'm going to take you who are in a procedure of, a, we use the term sleep if you choose to, in a dream of death, in an idea of separation, and through the love and forgiveness that I will employ in my own mind, I'm going to show you the reality of life. And, I understand that there are still uh, those in what we call traditions of space-time who believe somewhere that the idea of death is a necessary factor in the idea of eternal life. If you look at it with me for just a moment, it couldn't possibly make any sense. There's no doubt that as we identify ourselves, we sit here with the idea of coming here and being here and leaving. The simple truth of the matter is we don't know who we are, what we're doing, how we got here, where we're going. Now, in order to be here, we exist with provisions that guarantee us what? Our own demise. From the time you get here, there's a little association of separation. You're told that you're going to die. In a literal sense, everything that you do depends on death. Jesus, in the Course in Miracles, uses the term worship, okay? You worship death. In a particular idea you have about yourself will always be contained the evidence of the possibility of your uh, immediate demise, okay? I'm going to let you look with me, and this is from our Course in Miracles how a whole mind handles the idea of the possibility of death that is contained as an idea in your mind with the inclusion of the entirety of the reference of yourself, mentally and emotionally and conceptually as to what you think you are. And we're going to look uh, just for a second at the first two paragraphs of Lesson 163. Let's glance together then at this lesson. There is no death. 
the Son of God is free. Notice that it doesn't say that you're not going to die. It says there is no death. Death is a thought that takes on many forms, often unrecognized. It may appear as sadness, fear, anxiety, doubt, anger, faithlessness, lack of trust, concern for bodies, envy, and all forms in which the wish to be as you are not may come to tempt you. And all such thoughts are but reflections of the worshiping of death as Savior and as giver of release. Listen to what it is. Embodiment of fear, the host of sin, God of the guilty and the Lord of all illusions and deceptions, does the thought of death seem mighty, for it seems to hold all living things within its withered hand, all hopes and wishes in its blighting grasp, all goals perceived but in its sightless eyes. The frail, the helpless, and the sick bow down before its image, thinking it alone is real, inevitable, worthy of their trust, for it alone will surely come. So we're looking at the idea uh, that within those first two paragraphs are what we really know death to be. Okay? If you look at it with me, when you express anxiety, it's the same as though you're dead. When you're fearful, you're dead. When you're unhappy, you're dead. Okay? When you doubt, all of the things that represent ideas about yourself being separate from the reality of the love of God define what death is. I'll look with you for just a moment, if you'd like, about the idea of death. Okay, you might try it with me if you want to. Say to me, uh, within the conceptual mind, everything is an idea. Say that, everything is an idea. Yes, surrounding you are objective associations of your mind that you have given evidence of correspondence within your mind that express ideas about outcomes that you want concerning these forms within your concepts. What this lesson says, and what I am very certain of, is that in a literal sense, every expression of the form within your conceptual mind justifies your temporalness and hence your death. There is no relationship contained within space-time that does not define to you the idea that you could actually be terminated. This would have to be true because you're in a constant condition of apparently being terminated or with a minimum the prospect of being terminated any second. Now, we call that fear. Is there a difference between fear and death? What would it be? The idea of fear is what the idea of death is. So remember what it said? The idea of death takes many forms, and it's an expression of our emotional involvement with each other in our certainty that we can reach conclusions about what life is within ideas of the occupation of time without the admission that we come from the entirety of a real source. So there's a little test that goes on for you when I look at you from the certainty in my, of my enlightenment, and I say, there is no death. It's not that you can't die, because certainly you believe within this little segment of time as occupying a body, you're going to be put down in and turned to dust, and you're going to be gone, and you're going to be the memory in some other body. What I'm offering you is my certainty that there is no such thing as termination. And if that's true, there's no such thing as this existence. If it is true that life is eternal and that this is not life, there's no need for you to be concerned about the structure of your idea of fear in relationship with the occupation you have to occupy this space-time.